So good days. Bill um, uh, wants to set on his journey to to curse the Jews. Ben tells him, no, you cannot go. You can't go with them. You can't curse the people. Keep Baruchu. It's a very interesting Rashi. Rashi says, When the Rebbe Hashem told Bilam, you can't go, Okay, Rebbe Hashem, fine, I won't go. But let me give a long distance klala. I'll stay here. I'll curse them from here. That's how Rashi explains the progression over here. First he tells him, don't go. Bilam says, okay, fine, I won't go. Let me curse him here. No. You can't curse them. Not from there, not from here. Well, if I can't curse them, let me at least give them a bracha. I don't need your bracha. Because they're benched already. This is what people say to the bee. I don't want your honey. I don't want your sting either. Which means keep it. So this is a strange Rashi. It's a strange reaction on Bilam's part. Bersham says, you can't go, you can't curse him. So he says, okay, can I give him a bracha? All of a sudden, Bilam became an Ay of Israel. All of a sudden, he wants to bless them. I mean, he's getting paid over here to curse them. He has no love for the Jews. He has a sinner for the Jews. So Bersham says, you can't curse him. Well, let me bless them. What's Bilam's Havamina? What does that mean? Do you really mean that I want to give him a bracha? So I saw an interesting ha'ara, interesting pshat in the Sefer Shem and Atayv of Adolf Weinberger. And that is at the end of the Parsha of Abaisai after Bilam was unsuccessful in giving any of his curses. So his final parting shot, so to speak, he gave Bullock an Eitza. And he said, listen, Bullock, listen, I was unsuccessful. But I hate the Jews as much as you. He called, I give him an Eitza. I give you an Eitza. Elokeim shaleilu seinizimahu. Their God hurts, detests, despises immorality. Bimachshul them in Zlus. Go get the Benais Midian, the daughters of Midian, and seduce the Jewish men, and you'll see God will get so angry with them, there'll be a Magefa Pekachav. Number one, what was Bilam's Hava Mina that that would work? Here you have Kla Yisrael, the Gemara says that in Egypt not one Jew except for one woman that was buying this was Mizanet. This was not their thing. This was not their problem. So all of a sudden he comes up with the uh, Let me marshal them in Znus. Why did he think that this would in fact happen? How did he think that he would be able to do this? And what is even more troubling, why Taka did it happen? Why did we have this, you know, this mass demonstration of immorality and Znus, before Hesia? How did it happen? So the pshat is, this came about as a result of Bilam's bracha. And that is because when you get a bracha, you have to be very careful who's giving the bracha. When someone gives you a bracha, he has to give it a tayvayin. He has to give it with a full heart. He 
has to give it with the kavana that he wants to help you. But a person that has Chazal described Bilam as a tzorayim, a mean-spirited, miserly fellow who's only interested in his own so padding his own pocketbook. When a person like that gives you a bracha, in that bracha, it's more klola than bracha. So Bill of C's call Israel. He says, Yaakov. The most famous of all of Bilam's brachas. How beautiful are the tents of the Klal Yisrael. Zog and Chazal, how beautiful were they? Because Rosh, Ein Pischein, Chuvan and Zebazeh, he saw that the, the way they set up the camp, people could not look into each other's tents. He saw the tremendous tzniyus in Klal Yisrael. So he gives them a brach and he says, you guys are terrific. You're tzniyim. You're, you're careful about our rayas. You're not, you're not peeping toms. You're not looking what people are doing in the other people's tents. You're beautiful. You're great. But that bracha was mean-spirited. And it was a nefarious bracha. It was a sinister bracha. It was a bracha to, lay, to raise their level of confidence and complacency that they would think we can never be nichshal in our eyes because look even this guy Bill looks at us and he says see how tznuim they are how modest they are how they don't engage in this type of immorality when people feel complacent so then complacency comes before the fall so when they met the Benos Midian and their reaction should have been, well, listen, we got to stay away from this. We don't know what could happen. So something went off in their head. They said, nah, what do you have to worry about? You're from a Yid. You're Tzadikim. Matayim Aleha Yaakov. We're Tznuim. Even Bilam thinks we're Tznuim. We don't have to worry. And then what happened? Bilam was successful in raising this level of complacency that eventually, in fact, they were nichshal. So the bracha that Bilam gave, there was a sinister part to that. And that's how he come, came up with this plan of imimachshal the manarayas. And that's what Chazal say, keep your bracha. Because it's not worth the cost. We don't want your honey, because we don't want your sting either. And that's how Bilam was successful in achieving this. I uh, I just want to mention at the end, this has been on my desk, Marbay say now for several months. And there's a doctor in New York City has asked me to speak about this and I told him that if it comes up somehow I will try to speak about this. The name of the doctor is Dr. Leon Zakarowitz. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name correct but he is a neurologist in New York City. And he's asked me in the past to speak about this and as I mentioned I didn't find a way of, of making it irrelevant but unfortunately something has happened that now at least uh, Unfortunately, it's too late to do anything about it. And that is that there's a case in Canada, in Winnipeg, Manitoba.